Hey, salut friends. We are a couple of weeks into summer. If you're like me and I've already gotten bored by citrus fragrances, I'm going to talk about some uncommon choices today. I do enjoy some fresh fragrances, but as with many others in the hobby, I'm more into richer, darker, woody scent profiles. For that reason, I don't particularly stick to firm seasonal rotations and such just loosely to make sure those citrus aromatics get worn. But for the most part, I just go with the flow. So here I'll share some options that are either not talked about that often or go against the grain to some extent. Not completely obscure, these are still from known houses, so are readily available. Again, some of these are not necessarily beach volleyball in Miami kind of sense when it is scorching hot, but work for me on a relatively normal summer day. So let's start. One honorable mention, because I'm not entirely sure about the distribution of this house. This is Aventure from Gallimard, which is one of the three historical houses from Gras, along with Fragonard and Molinard. And yet, they are smaller in terms of business. If I have to quickly summarize this fragrance, this is how Théa d'Armes would smell if it had come out in the 90s. It has that grapefruit orange for a brisk opening, with arid spices like black pepper, a notable LME reminding me of Eau Sauvage Parfum to some extent, some dry amber as well. So these resinous facets make it more denser than Théâtre d'Hermès, does not have that flint or the airy spaciousness from the high dose of ISO is super. This is more predictable in that sense. Of course, the notable earthy vetiver component with the cedar partially dry down is also here, a really good woody aromatic scent, especially for the price. Now let's get into the actual list in no particular order, starting with an oddball. At number 10 is Joux de Peau from Serge Lotens by Christopher Schildrake. This is based on the memories of Serge Lotens' childhood when he would pick up bread from the local boulangerie. Though it has some bready, yeasty, sweet, gourmand leaning aspects to it, with the other components, it becomes a completely traditional fragrance. It is creamy, lactonic from the milk accord, adding to the tropical, fleshy, woody side of the coconut. Spicy angles come from the touch of holiday spices, licorice and immortelle, but they don't go into the pickle territory here. Soft amber and sandalwood in the dry down, sweet without going overboard. Altogether, this blonde woods and toasty bread smell is what makes this scent. This gets compared to Santal Majuscule, which to me is more of a dark mahogany side of woody scent. This one, though it is warm, feels like a summer glow of oak woods to me, which of course goes with the visual of a freshly baked countryside bread. So that makes it wearable in the summer for me. At number nine, let's do another against the grain scent. This is black from Comme des Garçons, which from the name notes on the presentation does not seem like a summer fragrance yet it works for me. It is going for the dark, smoky, black, woody, birch concept that has been done so many times now, but the density is less here. I get the incense, birch, which are dark and resinous, but they have this thin and crispy, polished, industrial woodiness that come the Yarson does really well. The black pepper, licorice bring the fresh, spicy and cool aspects. The dry cedar and vetiver maintain the vibrant woodiness. No sweetness really, which also helps. So it is not this sweet, smoky, barbecue-like bird star fragrance, which something like Lelabo Patchouli 24 is. Now that for me does not work at all during summer. This, however, has a sense of levity, which makes it work for me. At number eight, let's do a fresher option. This is Mandragore Poop from Gotal. The idea here is to do an interpretation of the mysterious mandrake root. The fragrance though is fresh and easy going. It is a spicy aromatic scent. Anise is the star of the show for me. Here it is soft, spicy, sweet and slightly mentholated. Again, anise and licorice has been a connecting thread so far in this list. Mint with bergamot and pepper is also present for the fresh energizing opening. Then the aromatics come in rosemary and geranium. Heliotrope throws a curveball with its hazy almond-like facets, dries down to this really soft amber and incense combination, 
Really a fantastic fresh fragrance if you like star anise. This has always reminded me of this Marseille specialty liquor called Pastis made from anise. The darker fragrances from Goutal get a lot of talk. Sable, Ambre Fetiche, Ensemble Flamboyant and so forth. But I think they are also very good at doing citrus fragrances. No clunkiness, nothing overly synthetic revealing itself at the base. This is one of the better ones. At number 7, let's do another fresh one. This is Lo Merzine from Anatole Le Breton. This is a green earthy floral fragrance supposed to represent his childhood spent playing in the meadows. This to me is like an indie take on something like Chanel number no. 19. You get the green, bitter, sappy galbanum with this fresh, watery angelica. Very green, fresh grass like departure to the scent. Then the florals come through in the heart. A combination of hawthorn and magnolia bringing in the plushness. Iris is also present, more of a fresh vegetal iris. Dries down to moss and hay. Not a dry hay, more of a green earthy one with the moss reminiscent of summer. The scent is also quite vegetal overall and realistic, going for that green countryside vibe. So in that way, it differs from the more abstract, polished, perfumey outlook of number 19. A fantastic green fragrance nonetheless. At number 6, let's do the last obvious fresh fragrance. This is Rosé Cuir from Frederic Moll, composed by Jean-Claude Elena. This seems to be having a bit of a resurgence here lately, after being totally divisive at the time of release. Many seem to be appreciating it, because it's a fantastic fragrance. This famously does not have rose in it, as it says in the name. Geranium is supposed to create that impression. So that, with the black currant Bourjon Cassis, brings out the fresh, cooling, spicy dimension. Dries down to vetiver, cedar and the soft, earthy leather. Though it is straightforward, it changes throughout the day. Only 15 main materials here apparently. Yet captures that alternate version of a spicy rose scent. Inspired and named after this romanticized Provencal wind current called Mistral. It was initially named Rose Mistral. It's much more suited here I think because of its holographic nature. A nice addition to the other rose fragrances in the collection. Bonus Frederick Mall mention. I just wanted to relive the days when I visited Abu Dhabi with the oud aroma in the air. So I tried Dawn from the Residuum collection, which works surprisingly well in the heat for a oud olibanum fragrance. It is the polite one from the line, so it gave me a day of Middle Eastern summer. Everyone praises the night and the moon, but Dawn I think is seriously underrated. It really captures the sensation of waking up in a foreign land and seeing the sunrise when the morning recitation goes on at a mosque beautifully. From number 5, let's do a couple of designers. This is Scent Intense from Costume National by Laurent Boyer, who is the co-creator of Alien from Mugler along with Dominique Opion. I think he trained under Opion because this fragrance smells very much like a Opion composition. This is a distinctive woody amber floral fragrance. It has a fruity, spicy opening with cinnamon and apple. Then further into the wearing, there is this calming hibiscus tea accord that comes through, which really is the standout in this fragrance. Then dries down to this amber, sandalwood and patchouli scent. It does remind me of the style of others from the house like Om, but with that fruity tea accord and florals, shakes up the scent profile a bit. Does not smell like any other designer fragrances out there. Also keeps it relatively lightweight. It is a designer amber after all, so works well in the heat for me. At number 4, let's do another unique designer tea fragrance. This time from Hermes. This is L'Ombre des Merveilles, created by Christine Nagel from the now underappreciated Merveille line. The Eau de Merveille signature from the original Eau de Toilette is this particular orangey, mineralic, spicy, slightly salty, sweet amber accord. It has a sizzling sensation to it, somehow. Very abstract, very Hermes. This takes that in a different direction with smoked black tea and incense for a summer afternoon in Darjeeling kind of experience. A brilliant composition. At number 3, let's do another Christine Nagel. This is Archive 69 from Etat Libre d'Orange. This is another avant-garde release from the house based on camphor. It has some other notes complementing it some pepper, amber, benzoin, 
and even this peculiar orchid plum accord. But the camphor is the star here. It does smell strange from the combination of this pungent mothball like camphor with an incense in the background. It reminds me of the camphoric undertones in the Guerlain Arsen Materials collection. I think the idea with this was to create something that feels sacred and profane at the same time. Seems like they were so satisfied that they decided to name it after the address of their boutique. At number 2, let's do an iris from Olfactive Studio. This is iris shot from their Extrait de Parfum collection. This is a particular iris fragrance in that it fully embraces the rhizome carrot root aspects of iris, opens with some aldehydes and spices at the top, very short lived, an undercurrent of cassis, but then it is all about the iris. The iris feels like it has that sort of orish fat content in a way, that sort of buttery, oily facets are prominent. It has iris concrete in fact, so makes sense. A good amount of nutty, toasty nuances too, from almonds and sesame. Then the creamy, powdery carrot seeds add to the smell with some additional sweetness. The photograph that comes with this fragrance shows just a single iris flower, but I can visualize the color orange with that iris purple when I smell this fragrance. A contemporary optimistic interpretation of iris. At number one, let's finish with another against the grain fragrance. This is Cardinal from Healy. With that name, this is obviously going for that liturgical church incense. Some pepper, aldehydes at the top. After which it is all about the frankincense and labdanum. Now obviously with all that, this might sound heavy, but not at all. It is done in a light handed fashion here, also has this linen accord, which might as well be cashmere on. Because of that, it has a softer, gentler take on incense. So it is more of a small town wooden church than a gothic cathedral in a forest, making it a palatable incense for hot days. So there you have it, some of my atypical fragrances for summer. Thanks for watching, take care and ciao.